the Messerschmitt Mi-323 Gigant was a German military transport aircraft of World War II. It was a powered variant of the Mi-321 military glider and was the largest land-based transport aircraft of the war. A total of 213 are recorded as having been made, a few being converted from the Mi-321. Development the Mi-323 was the result of a 1940 German requirement for a large assault glider in preparation for Operation Sea Lion, the projected invasion of Great Britain. The DFS-230 light glider had already proven its worth in the Battle of Fort Ebony Mel in Belgium, and would later be used successfully in the invasion of Crete in 1941. However, in order to mount an invasion across the English Channel, the Germans would need to be able to airlift vehicles and other heavy equipment as part of an initial assault wave. Although Operation Sea Lion was cancelled, the requirement for a heavy air transport capability still existed, with the focus now on the forthcoming Operation Barbarossa, the invasion of the Soviet Union. On October 18, 1940, Junkers and Messerschmitt were given just 14 days to submit a proposal for a large transport glider. The emphasis was still very much on the assault role, the ambitious requirement was to be able to carry either an 88mm gun and its half-track tractor, or a Panzer IV medium tank. The Junkers Ju-322 Mammut reached prototype form but was eventually scrapped due to difficulties in procuring the necessary high-grade timber for its all-wood construction and, as was discovered during the Mammut's only test flight, an unacceptably high degree of instability inherent in the design. The proposed Messerschmitt aircraft was originally designated Mi-261W, then changed to Mi-263 and eventually became the Mi-321. Although the Mi-321 saw considerable service in Russia as a transport, it was never used for its intended role as an assault glider. Mi-323, early in 1941, as a result of feedback from transport command pilots in Russia. The decision was taken to produce a motorized variant of the Mi-321, to be designated Mi-323. It was decided to use French no Mayrani GR-14N radial engines rated at 1,180 RPS for takeoff as used in the Block MB-175 aircraft. Using French engines was thought to place no burden on Germany's overstrained industry. Initial tests were conducted using four Nome engines attached to a strengthened Mi-321 wing, which gave a modest speed of 210 km per hour-80 km per hour slower than the JA-52 transport aircraft. A fixed undercarriage was fitted, which comprised four small wheels and a bogey at the front of the aircraft with six larger wheels in two lines of three at each side of the fuselage, partly covered by an aerodynamic fairing. The rear wheels were fitted with pneumatic brakes, and could stop the aircraft within 200 am. The four-engined Mi-323C was considered merely a stepping stone to the six-engine D-series. It still required the five-engined Hinkle He-111Z Willing or the highly dangerous Troy Kashlep formation of three Messerschmitt Bf-110 heavy fighters and rocket-assisted takeoff to get airborne when fully loaded, but it could return to base under its own power when empty. This was clearly not much better than the Mi-321, so the V-2 prototype became the first to have six engines and flew for the first time in early 1942, becoming the prototype for the D-series aircraft. The selection of the six engines, and their specific placement on the wing's leading edge, were fitted to reduce torque, a trio of counterclockwise rotation engines mounted on the port wing and a trio of clockwise rotation engines on the starboard wing as seen forward from behind each engine, resulting in the props rotating away from each other at the tops of their arcs, as did the counter-rotating twin propellers on the Hinkle He-177. Design As per the Mi-321, the Mi-323 had massive, semi-cantilever, high-mounted wings which were braced from the fuselage out to the middle of the wing. To reduce weight and to save on aluminum, much of the wing was made of plywood and fabric, while the fuselage was of metal tube construction with wooden spars and covered with dope fabric, with heavy bracing in the floor to support the payload. The D-Series had a crew of five, two pilots, two flight engineers and a radio operator. Two gunners could also be carried. The flight engineers occupied two small cabins, 
one in each wing between the inboard and center engines. The engineers were intended to monitor engine synchronization and allow the pilot to fly without worrying about engine status, although the pilot could override the engineer's decisions on engine and propeller control. Maximum payload was around 12 tons, although at that weight the Helmuth Walter Worker designed, liquid-fueled RATO units used on the Mi-321 were required for takeoff. The RATOs were mounted beneath the wings outboard of the engines, with the wings having underside fittings to take up to a total of four RATO units. The cargo hold was 11 a.m. long, 3 a.m. wide and 3.4 a.m. high. The typical loads it carried were 115 a CMFH-18 field artillery piece accompanied by its SDKFZ. 7 half-track transport vehicle, 2 3.6 a ton trucks, 8,700 loaves of bread, an 88 a flat gun and accessories, 52 drums of fuel, 130 men, or 60 stretchers. Some Mi-321s were converted to Mi-323s, but the majority were built as six-engine aircraft from the beginning. Early models were fitted with wooden two-blade propellers, which were later replaced by metal, three-blade variable pitch versions. The Mi-323 had a maximum speed of only 219 a km per hour at sea level and speed dropped with altitude. For defensive armament, it was armed with 513 MMG 131 machine guns firing from a dorsal position behind the wings and from the fuselage. They were manned by the extra gunners, radio operator and engineers. Operational History By September 1942, Mi-323s were being delivered for use in the Tunisian campaign, and entered service in the Mediterranean theater in November 1942. The high rate of loss among Axis shipping had made necessary a huge airlift of equipment across the Mediterranean to keep Rommel's Africa Corps supplied. On April 22, 1943, a formation of 27 fully loaded Mi-323s was being escorted across the Sicilian Straits by Bf-109s of JG-27 when it was intercepted by seven squadrons of Spitfires and P-40s. 21 of the Mi-323s were lost while three of the P-40s were shot down by the escorts. In terms of aircraft design, the Mi-323 was very resilient, and could absorb a huge amount of enemy fire, unless loaded with barrels of fuel a Euro the Africa Corps a Euro Shia Euro nicknames of Luca Plus Bomber or even more derisively as the adhesive tape bomber, was somewhat unfair. The Mi-323 was something of a sitting duck being so slow and large an aircraft. However, no transport aircraft can ever be expected to survive without something close to air superiority, and it is believed that no Mi-323s survived in service beyond the summer of 1944. A total of 198 Mi-323s were built before production ceased in April 1944. There were several production versions, beginning with the D-1. Later D and E versions differed in the choice of power plant and in defensive armament, with improvements in structural strength, total cargo load and fuel capacity also being implemented. Nonetheless, the Mi-323 remained significantly underpowered. There was a proposal to install six BMW 801 radials, but this never came to pass. The Mi-323 was also a short-range aircraft, with a typical range of 1,000-1,200 km. Despite this, the limited numbers of Mi-323s in service were an invaluable asset to the Germans, and saw intensive use. Variants Mi-323 V1, first prototype, powered by four Gnome Rene 14N4849 engines, Mi-323 V2, prototype, powered by six Gnome Rene 14N engines, became the standard for D production series, Mi-323 D1, first production series, powered by six Gnome Rene 14N engines originally intended for use in the Block 175, 27.92 MMG 15 machine guns in cockpit fittings provided, field modifications increased defensive armament, variable pitch ratio propellers. With three blades, Mi-323 D2, as D1 but with engine installation originally intended for use in the Leo 451, fixed pitch wooden Heiner propellers with two blades, Mi 323 D6, as D2, 
variable pitch ratio propellers with three blades, Mi 323 V13, prototype, powered by six Gnome Rene 14N engines, served as a master for the Mi 323E production series, Mi 323 V14, prototype, powered by six 1340 picoseconds. Junkers Jumo 211F engines, not proceeded with, Mi 323E minus one second production series, two gun turrets incorporated in the wings, Mi 323E minus two, proposed version with heavier armament, Mi 323E minus two WT, proposed escort gunship version, based on the E1. Classified as a Waffentrager by the RLM, which the WT suffix denoted, in a similar role to that of the American YB-40 Flying Fortress gunship heavy defensive fighter conversion for the USAAF. Primary mission was to provide normal 323 cargo formations with heavy defensive protection. No cargo carrying ability. Solid nose with 20mm cannon turret, two additional wing turrets plus up to ten other machine guns cannon of varying calibers firing from standard and new waste beam positions. 1.3 tons of armor plating was added across the entire airframe. Crew increased to 21, the extra crew members operating the plane's guns. Two prototypes built and tested, but series was cancelled after it was judged that normal single-engine fighters were more effective in the transport escort role. One of the prototypes was briefly assigned to KG-200 for operational evaluation, where it flew armed escort for the small number of captured B-17 flying fortresses operated by the Gishwader. Mi-323 V-16, prototype, powered by six 1,340 picoseconds Jumo 211R engines, intended to serve as a master for the Mi-323 F production series, Mi-323 V-17, prototype, powered by six 1,600 DPS Nomra Ni 14R engines, intended to serve as a master for the Mi-323G, survivors, no complete aircraft survives, but the Luftwaffe Museum der Bundeswehr near Berlin has a Mi-323 main wing spar in its collection. A ruined but complete wreck was found in 2012, in the sea near La Maddalena, an island near Sardinia, Italy. The aircraft lies in around 200 ft of water, around 8 nautical miles from the coast. It was shot down by a British Bristol Bowfighter longer Euro range fighter on July 26, 1943, while in a Euro route from Sardinia to Pistoia in Italy. Specifications Data from Britannica Book of the Year 1944. German aircraft of the Second World War, general characteristics, crew, 5, capacity, 130 troops or 10 a Euro 12 tons of equipment, length, 28.2 metres, wingspan, 55.2 m, height, 10.15 m, wing area, 300 ma squared, empty weight, 27,330 kg, loaded weight, 29,500 kg, max takeoff weight, 43,000 kg, power plant, 6 a, Gnome Rene 14N 4849, 1180 picoseconds for takeoff each, performance, maximum speed, 285 km per hour. Cruise speed, 218 km per hour. Range, 800 km. Ferry range, 1,100 km. Service ceiling, 4,000 m. Rate of climb, 3.6 m per second. Armament, guns, multiple 7.92 mm MG 15, MG 81 or 13 mm MG 131 machine guns. See also. Related development, Messerschmitt Mi-321, aircraft of comparable role, configuration and era, Junkers Ju-322, related lists, list of aircraft of World War II, list of military aircraft of Germany, references, notes. Bibliography. External links, U.S. intelligence report on the German Mi-323 Gigant transport aircraft appeared in Tactical and Technical Trends, number 21. March 25, 1943, Secrets of Germany's Flying Freighter. Popular Science, June 1944, PA 56D, A Reuniting of Former Enemies, 
a Luftwaffe Mi-232 pilot meets the RAF Marauder pilot who shot him down in a 1983 issue of flight. 